I think we have to see our genome like the material we got from our parents and which makes us unique. And the genome is essentially a very large book. It's even bigger than a book. It's equivalent in size to a thousand Bibles. But instead of having 26 letters, it has got four letters, A, C, T, and G. And genome sequencing means reading the entire book of three billion base pairs and make the complete sequence of these A, C, T, and Gs. So these A, C, T, and Gs determine who we are in part, determine partly our susceptibility to diseases as well and to health, our susceptibility to respond to drugs, and understanding this susceptibility better helps us better predict diseases, potentially prevent diseases, probably diagnose better diseases, detect diseases early so that you can cure them before they are very clinically apparent, but also finding new drugs. And these promises, that means prediction, prevention, tailored therapy, and new therapies have already been delivered partly since 2001, since the first human genome was entirely sequenced. But we are at the dawn of this evolution. I don't know if it is a revolution or an evolution. I don't know. Time will tell. But what is absolutely sure is that we are moving towards genome sequencing, probably being routine care in a few years. And that information will really help tailor healthcare to the individual genetic makeup. I think we need also to be very realistic. There is a lot of progress to be made until it becomes reality. There is a lot of knowledge to accumulate because we have only a very limited understanding right now of the genome. We have very limited understanding of the interactions between the genome and the environment, which contributes equally to diseases. And we also need to demonstrate really the value of this approach for common diseases. So that's where we are right now. It's a very exciting time. It's times where uh, the DNA sequencing, the IT technology, the AI machine learning can be really put together to address these challenges. The challenge now is really to build up the knowledge, to see how these new technologies can be applied to healthcare in a way which is beneficiary for the population, to, to control as well the risks, because there are also some risks associated with genome sequencing. And to meet these challenges, one need firstly to have a real commitment from institutions. We need to have access to data from a large number of patients and people. We need to have the knowledge around the genome. We need to have the technology to sequence these DNAs, to store this data, to analyze this data. We need to have people who can also contribute by policy, for instance, making sure, really sure that all that is under control. And Quebec has it all, and Montreal has it all. So it's a matter now of sort of crystallizing and catalyzing all this potential with the CERC being here to catalyze these for a particular objectives, which means using these genome sciences to help the discovery and development of new drugs. Genomic sciences have really made a big contribution so far, I would say, in two disease areas. The first one is oncology, to the point now that the very diagnosis of cancer relies not only on histology, that, mean, that means microscope analysis of the tissues, but also on the DNA changes of the tumor. The second also point in oncology is that, at least in second-line therapy, treatment is now based also on the genetic makeup of the tumor. So this is reality in oncology. Another area where genomic sciences have also made a big impact is rare diseases. Until recently, we knew that a particular patient had a rare disease, but the 
molecular basis of this disease was frequently not known, and that raised also diagnostic challenges. It would have taken sometimes years for parents to put, and doctors, to put a name on a particular rare disease. They knew that something was wrong, but had difficulties in diagnosis properly. That was called the diagnostic odyssey. Now, when a doctor and parents have a child where they suspect something is wrong, they would immediately sequence the genome and find the root, the molecular root, the molecular cause of the disease, and have the right diagnosis. It's a real evolution here in patient care. The first step is what is called target validation. We believe that a particular molecule or protein in the body is causal for a disease. We want to make sure that it is the case. We want to make sure that we can develop drugs to hit or modulate this protein. And that is called target validation. And genomic sciences can really contribute to this effort. The second point where we want to help with this CERC is what is called proof of concept studies, where a company develops a molecule, which is potentially a medicine, the first step when it has been tested in healthy volunteers is to show that these molecules does what it is expected to do. That means fixing a disease. With these new genomic sciences, we can identify genetically people who are highly responsive to these type of new interventions. And so we want to identify these individuals and we want to test these molecules to show proof of concept. I think McGill, the environment here, the hospitals, is optimally positioned for that uh, very effort because it has got the patient population, it has got the laboratory, it has got the IT infrastructure, it has got the clinical research center, and it has got the institution willingness to succeed in this effort. My dream, if I may say so, is that in seven years, we have built a platform here in Canada, at McGill in particular, whereby industry, pharma, biotechs, academia, who has developed a new molecule, a new drug, could come here and we have the ability to very rapidly, in sort of industrialized way, have the ability to demonstrate if or not this molecule works. If the molecule works in this proof of concept study on highly genetically selected individuals, if it works, then it's the, red, it's the green flag for companies, industry, to further develop the drug. If it doesn't work in this individual, it is a red flag telling industry, stop development, stop investing money, it will not work. And that is highly valuable for industry as well. I think with this CERC, we have the potential to transform partly the way drugs will be developed. I think it has the potential to improve probability of success, to make this process faster, potentially cheaper as well, and at the end of the day, to have patients accessing these new molecules faster.